Thank you. With the Council's indulgence, I'm going to speak on this at a little length, and I've got some points to make, and obviously I'm going to be voting against it. The first point is, uh, at least in my view, the process was flawed from the beginning with in terms of meaningful public input. The original task force, only 10 out of the 22 people who were on it voted for the bridge. And of those 10, at least six were governmental employees, not policy makers. And of the rest of the 22, 12 abstained, seven voted for no build, which would have included marine drive update. Uh, and two, excuse me, two abstained, seven voted for no build, and three voted for another option. And I guess the question I have is what would have happened if the six governmental employees had abstained instead of making a policy decision that should have been left to the elected officials? Uh, I would also suggest that tonight's decision is a flawed process, and that's the uh, equivalent of the motion I made a couple weeks ago when we first, maybe it was a month ago when we considered it. At that time, we had 3,500 plus pages of detailed reports that were submitted to us as the council within seven days of the first decision. And now what we've got is an additional 400 pages that were submitted to us tonight within six days uh, of the de de decision. That's an extremely limited time to digest this information. Then in part of the 400 pages tonight is a detailed, but in some aspects still superficial response to the paraphrase, paraphrase testimony. And I think all that really does, when you look at how many paraphrase testimony issues were raised, I think it really just serves to emphasize the need for further discussion. Um, second point is there were no reasonable alternatives definitively discussed or undertaken before the process. I would again point to the 1997 Bridgehead study with hedge recommendations. The vast majority were never even considered, much less implemented. Uh, I guess I want to talk a little bit about the rule of induced demand. The rule of induced demand says you cannot build your way out of congestion. And that's, in effect, what we're trying to do. And I would guess that trying to solve congestion by making more roads and wider roads is like trying to solve obesity by buying bigger pants. Three, there's no real information in any of the material whether the seismic reinforces that are needed for the proposed bridge are included in the $430 million estimate or not. It's just not there. Four, all this is doing is moving the problem, and I'm using McCain air quotes here, uh, problem from one side of the river to the other. Think of Wallace Road now. What this proposed bridge would do is dump a whole boatload of additional traffic on Wallace Road. The traffic impact on the, left, on the west side of the, the river will be concentrated on the south end of Wallace, so the bridge is going to cause traffic impacts all the way north to the bridge itself. Five, if you look at the plans for this, there's going to be an elevated highway from Glen Creek Road to Highway 22. It's going to be a wall separating Wallace Marine Park from West Salem. There will also be another elevated highway south of Edgewater uh, uh, from the bridge to Highway 22 past um, uh, Rosemont exit. Plus, there are going to be sound walls on top of that. And then on the east side of the city, there's uh, Pine and Hickory Streets are going to become arterials for bridge ramps, which will be elevated again, just past commercial. Finally, on this point, there's going to be the attendant displacement of homes and businesses. Six points. Six point is there are no really viable funding options. Here's what we've got. Tolls on all three bridges, gas tax increases, vehicle registration increases, property tax increases, and there's little, if any, federal or state funding. In the meantime, we're continuing to spend city money on the project. For all the good that this money will eventually do us, we may as well just take the money down to the river and throw it in. And my last point is, goes back to the process. Last time we voted on this, I made an unsuccessful motion to postpone in order to actually review the vast amount of information presented. I ask why we were in such a hurry to do this before the end of the year after no council involvement for well over a year and a half. The only response I got was that the staff had been working on it as well as the staff internally had been working on it and there were some scats 
work on it. And at SCATS, we have one representative out of over a dozen people. And without any council as a whole input, very significant changes were made in this project. Um, there was no real response to my question at the council last council meeting. Well, I've got a response. I think tonight's vote will be significantly different than if the vote were to be taken with the new council after January. Three of the four <laughs> newly elected councilors in their campaigns opposed the bridge. They each beat candidates who were in favor of the bridge. Two of those were by landslide, even though each was significantly outspent. So for all these reasons and more, I will be voting against the motion. This is a mistake, a solution looking for a problem, and a 20th century solution at that. It should not be built, and realistically will never be built, so I will be voting no on this motion. And thank you for allowing me to speak at length. <laughs> 